Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Uh, I'm coming at you again with another Profit Rev 2 tutorial. Uh, the last one did really, really well. It was the first video I've ever put out. Um, and it was really cool to see everyone watching it, liking it, commenting, you know, getting involved, uh, adding to it, like with the comments and stuff, trying it out. It sounded really, really cool. Um, I thought I'd do the same thing again with a new patch. Um, this one's a little bit different. Uh, it's more of a sort of solo-y type sound, um, but you can also use it in a soundscape -y way. Um, it's a little bit of a, like a glitchy pluck type thing. Um, and what I've done is I've sort of like messed around with how the reverb works within the patch. So, little example. <laughs> sort of like ducking in and out so uh, yeah let's get started shall we cool so first things first we're gonna do is we're gonna start a basic patch again so how to do that you hold both the up and down octaves and the hold and you press the hold key um, and that will get you a basic program cool all right so first things we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our oscillators so we're gonna set the mix to halfway wherever that is on yours um, and the first one is going to be set to a square wave or in this case a pulse wave and on the second oscillator it's going to be set to a triangle wave cool next thing we want to do is we want to go into the shape mod aspect of both of those oscillators so the square wave i quite like putting it around 80 ish to 82 percent um if you want to change it a little bit please feel free with any of these parameters that i'm doing if anything works a little bit nicer for you and you want and that makes your sound a little bit better Please, by all means, go for it. Um, these are not set in stone. These are just a rough guide. Cool. So shape two, we're going to do 54%. So that's for our triangle wave there. So you should have by now this sound. So, yeah, a little bit video gaming, but not quite the sound we want just yet. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to sync them together. Um, and the oscillator two is your main frequency. And then oscillator one is the one that uses all the harmonics that go off that oscillator too, okay? So in essence, I'll just explain by sound, this is what it sounds like. So you can hear that top one is sort of moving around on the frequencies above it. Cool, um, so I've set oscillator two to um, C3 because we're getting that plucked feel, it's a lot higher than normal. And then um, I'm gonna set oscillator one to like G3, that's probably the best one we can go for but you can change these obviously if it's something that you mess around with it and you think oh I like that one better obviously just do your thing um, yeah it'll sound really interesting and it'll be unique to you cool so the next thing we want to do is hit the low pass filter section um, so we're going to start with the cutoff and we're going to put it to 48 so that should sound like this now nothing perfect just how everything since should be all right so um, next thing we're going to do is the Envelope amount of the low pass filters. So that's this one here. And um, we're going to put this to around about 66. So like halfway, -ish, not quite halfway. Um, that's going to make it sound a bit like. So yeah, it's a little bit like sounding. Um, that's because we haven't affected any of the rest of the parameters just yet. Cool. So to make it into a plucky type sound, um, we're going to not do anything on velocity, nothing on key amount, nothing on audio mod. If you know about those and you want to do those, um, obviously feel free, go ahead and do it. That, you know, I'm not going to stop you, obviously. Um, next thing we should do is so delay set to zero. Um, the way it, to make it plucky, you keep the attack at zero. Um, and that means that the, the low pass filter opens up straight away. Um, if I make it a little bit later, you'll hear that it sounds like this. So we don't want that whoop whoop sound, um, we want it to come in straight away. So next thing we want to affect is the tail of the sound. So then we go to decay and it normally sounds like And then the more we add in, you can hear it start to come in there, um, the more decay we add on. So I'm going to put that to about 60, yeah. Like 50 to 60, um, whatever works best for you, uh, you go for it. Um, then I'm going to set the sustain on a little bit, which is different from normal, I think. Um, I'm going to have it around 30 to 40. Yeah, I'll probably do about 35 just to be 
as even as possible. Cool, and then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna hit our release section, and I'm just gonna set that to about 60-ish, I think. Let's have a listen. Cool, so it being at 60 means that um, there's a little bit of sort of like dying away after you take your fingers off the keys. If I was to put it to zero, it would just go like all of a sudden, and we don't quite want that. I think it sounds a little bit too, too intense, so we just want to soften off that release a little bit more. Um, cool, another thing you can do with this bit, um, if you wanna keep it in the polyphonic mode, um, I really, really like putting a bit of pan spread on. Um, it just makes everything sort of like randomly hit different areas of the stereo width. Um, I think that sounds really cool. If you're doing like nice and high pitch sort of like um, little sprinklings of sound over the top of like a soundscape type thing. Um, you might be able to hear that. That's sort of like, it's sort of hitting going from one side to the other. Sometimes it'll hit in the middle as well. So it's quite nice to have it sort of like sparkling at the top uh, with a bit of reverb. Sounds really quite nice. So yeah, so put some pan spread on if you want to. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna do, just to be on the safe side, is I'm gonna have a little bit of VCA release um, just along the same amounts as the low pass filter release. Just so it all comes out at the same time. Um, cool, all right, excellent. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to talk about the different ways we can play this patch. So when I play it, I quite like going from um, chord mode, or polyphonic mode, I should say. Um, and then if I want to do a little bit of a solo, then I can hit the unison mode, and it's just playing one note at a time. Um, it really, really sort of gives me that a lot of like, opportunity to mix in between. My, my style of playing is very much like, I like doing really lush chords and then having a little bit of solo whenever I need it and stuff like that. Um, and using, uh, if you go into unison and you sort of mess around with things, you can do a lot more pitch bendy stuff and it sounds quite nice and thick and things. And the sound does change, which we'll get onto right now. So, um, if you wanna do unison mode, um, you tap that button there that says unison. One quick thing to note is that the pan spread goes when you hit the unison mode. So I'm guessing that's because obviously the more sounds that you have, uh, the more voices that you have, the thicker it will be. So there's not that much opportunity for us to play with the stereo width at all. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that because I'm not an expert. But uh, yeah, so the pan spread goes, so just be aware of that. So we've got unison mode, and then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna hit into the MISC params, so that's miscellaneous parameters. It will usually start you off with program volume. Um, so we wanna hit all the way to where it says unison mode, and it should have one voice under it. Um, I quite like doing, if I'm doing sort of lush chords of five, six notes at a time, um, I quite like putting on three voices, because that, uh, that send, tends to sort of match the volume level when I'm going from chordally to solo mode. Yeah, cool. Uh, then the next thing, uh, if you want to put some detune on it to make it sound a little bit more edgy, let's say, uh, you can do that. So the value change from this is what it sounds like. going to keep it on zero um, but if you want that sort of sound then obviously that's how you do it go ahead feel free to add that in the way you want it to finally uh, we've got key mode um, so at the moment and usually it's set to low by default um, I quite like um, taking it all the way to the end um, and it's got last with an R after it and last R means last note you've played and it re-triggers every time so if you hear the difference will be uh, I can hold down one note and then I can play another note and it'll play the low pass filter and all the filter stuff will happen again, even though I'm holding down the notes. So if you don't want it with the re-trigger and you just go to last, then um, yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, you can probably be better if you put a little bit more sustain on. Uh, so you can hear that little bit of extra sound. I quite like it with the re on at the end. All right, so now we've got the main sort of sound. Um, it's time to move on to the effects and then after that we'll do the auxiliary section. So first the effects, uh, we're gonna turn our effect mode on and then we're gonna select all the way, not all the way to the end, but most of the way to the end, uh, the reverb section. Um, so that's gonna give you this sort of sound. 
Parameter one is the reverb time. So the more that is, the longer, the, the bigger the space you'll have. So this is at max. So it just sort of decays after a long period of time. And then parameter two is the tone. So the lower that is, the deeper the tone of the reverb is, the higher it is, the brighter the reverb tone it will be. So um, it nice and low will sound like this. And then a bit higher. Um, I, I quite like to put it a little bit lower, but um, whatever works best for you, you go for it. Um, also, if you're doing more sparse sort of notes and things, um, it's easy for you to get away with a large reverb time. Whereas if you're not necessary, if you're doing quite a lot of stuff, it might tend to get a little bit muddy if you put the reverb time on max. So just be aware. It's quite an easy knob to sort of change as you're playing, I think. I've done it quite a lot when I'm gigging and things. Um, I sort of change the reverb time as I go. I often find that the very max is l really, really long. And then if I just roll it off a tiny bit, it tends to be a lot more manageable. So yeah, that's just something that I've noticed on mine. Um, I don't know if that's the same for everyone else's. Okay, so final section is the auxiliary envelope. Yet again, the same as last time. So we're doing something different with it this time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to send our destination to FX Mix. So what that's going to do is that's going to sort of manipulate our um, reverb effect that we've got going on. Um, I also want to go back to the FX section and I want you to put the mix at 127. Um, that seems to work quite nicely for me. Then the next thing we do is the envelope amount of the auxiliary envelope. We're going to set all the way back to minus 127. So what that's doing is whenever we're going to play a note, the auxiliary envelope is going to send the mix back to just completely dry. And then after it, after the auxiliary envelope has taken effect, it's going to go 100% wet to the uh, reverb, 100% reverb. Okay, um, you don't need to worry about velocity, delay, so it's mainly just attack, decay and release. I think there's a tiny bit of sustain in there if you want it, um, just whatever works best for you, but I'm not really going to use it today. Next thing is the attack. We're going to set that to 44. Sound yellow will be cool. It's got a tiny little bit of like a click after it. Um, so I think how I got out of that was I did a little bit of decay and a tiny little bit of release. So I set the release to about 19 and the decay to about 29. So yeah, it sounds really interesting and quite cool there. Um, if you want to mess around with these parameters to get a sound that works a little bit better for you, please feel free. Um, I just like the fact that the when you play the note, the re or the reverb ducks out and then comes back in. It's almost like a side chained reverb type concept um, or a gated reverb, I think. But yeah, it's really really cool. Uh, I really really like it. So that's basically it. I'm gonna add on a little video that I did from Instagram like a month ago of me playing along to a beat with this patch. Um, so yeah, stay around for that. Also, um, I'm on Instagram. I do quite a lot of stuff on Instagram. Um, I'm gonna try obviously and keep up with the YouTube videos because it seems to be going down well. But um, yeah, follow me on Instagram as well because that's where I do a lot of my stuff as well. Cool, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in a bit. Check out the video. See you later.